Okay, you ready? This is the day I'm about to reveal five hair mistakes that you could be making right now that are making you look older. Now, I only bring out one of these particular styles of video per year. And every time I do, it gets a ton of interaction, a ton of new eyes, and ultimately you guys love them. Because every time I bring one out, I reveal things that I've never shared before. And today's video is no different, but I definitely feel the need to throw out a disclaimer. Because of all the new eyes, I always wanna make sure that you really know kind of where I'm coming from. So when I'm talking about mistakes that age you, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with getting older. And I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't feel confident and love yourself at whatever age you are. That's kind of the whole purpose of my channel, actually. What I'm saying is I want you to be the most confident that you can be at whatever age that you are. And I find a great way to do that is to give you knowledge. And for me, it's knowledge through hair. So yeah, I want you to be confident and therefore feel amazing. Now, keep in mind also, as I said before, I'm gonna be revealing some new mistakes here. And these mistakes are very easy to address. Now, when you do address these mistakes, you're going to find that you're inherently going to look younger. Now, keep in mind though, when I say younger, I'm not talking about trying to look like you're 12. I'm talking about looking more youthful, more alive, more vibrant, more confident, more all of the things. So yes, that is what we're gonna do here. Sound like a plan? Okay, now, uh, why don't we dive onto the mistakes? Oh, and if you stick around to the end, uh, maybe I'll do some K-diving. Sound good? No, there's no possible way I'm getting in that thing. Are you insane? Come on now. Okay, now, the first mistake is simply not addressing your new texture. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone through this particular conversation with a client in my chair. They'll sit down and they'll talk about how they used to style their hair or even let it air dry and it always looked smooth and polished and all of the great things. And for whatever reason, now when they do that, their hair is changing and they can't seem to figure out why that styling process isn't functioning for them. And the question that this ends in is always, what product do you recommend? So here's the issue. As we age, our texture changes. And as our texture changes, many times that can translate as looking either more frizzy or looking more coarse or even thinner or even looking flatter. And realistically, there are a lot of different factors that could play into why you're seeing that change. It could be dietary changes, it could be stress changes, it could be modifications to medications, it could be hormonal changes, it could be a host of different things. So sometimes changing a product or just throwing a product at it in general isn't necessarily the best move. It may be that because your hair texture is changing, we need to modify our approach to how we style it. Maybe your hair texture now doesn't lend itself to being able to just be air dried and get the results that you want to get. You may need to use a round brush or even potentially a flat iron to achieve the same results that you used to be able to achieve, simply allowing it to air dry. So realistically, trying to find a one and done simple product fix may not be the best option for you. In fact, it may be just a waste of money. You may just simply need to throw a round brush into your routine and there you go. How you like that? A stylist that's actually not selling you products. You're welcome, or something. <laughs> I always look behind me because I feel like there's something back there. <laughs> okay, on to the next mistake. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to this channel, you're probably wondering, why is this guy out in the middle of the woods talking to me about hair? I mean, I understand. Fair, that's, it is kind of weird. Uh, well, my name is Justin Hickox. I started doing hair in 1995, and I prefer to take you on adventures while I teach you about hair. At the end of the day, you're going to learn the exact same thing regardless of where I am. I figure this way you at least have the benefit of a potentially cool view instead of just the white walls in our salon. Makes kind of sense, right? So can we just agree that it's a win-win? I think fair enough. All right, and uh, yeah, welcome. <laughs> okay, now the next big mistake, mistake number two, is not addressing your makeup for your current skin tone or hair color. So here's the thing. As we age, it's not very uncommon at all for our skin tone to slightly shift. Whereas we may be used to it being a little bit warmer, it may get a bit cooler. And your skin tone plays a massive role in how your overall hair color looks on you. Now, one thing that's happened over the past couple of years that I absolutely love 
is the fact that people are becoming much more comfortable with living with their gray hair. Where it used to be that gray hair was the standard that aged you, now it's becoming much more accepted that it does not have to inherently age you, and that gray hair can absolutely look amazing on people. And I love the fact, personally, that people are starting to recognize that it can look fantastic on them, and they're starting to embrace and feel more confident in it. But with that said, your gray hair transition may require a slight shift in your makeup to really kind of dial it in. And this is something that happens all the time when we do drastic changes to color. If you go from blonde, for instance, to brown hair, the first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is, after we get this color done, make sure you go get your makeup modified so that those tones play better with your new color and really kind of bring it all together. That is exactly what happens. Now, regarding your skin tone, since that does change, I'm gonna give you kind of a simple way. There are definitely more ways, but this is a very simple way to kind of get an idea of where you're sitting in terms of skin tone. Now, if you find that when it comes to jewelry, you are far more comfortable in silver jewelry, then you're likely a little bit more on the cool side. But the flip side, if you have a tendency to wear a lot more gold and you feel much more confident and comfortable in gold jewelry, then you're probably a bit on the warmer side. Now, if you feel equally as amazing in both of them, then you're likely gonna fall more into the neutral category to which you really could kind of play both sides and be a little bit cool or a little bit warm. Both kind of color tones are gonna look good on you. So kind of use that as a gauge, but absolutely pay attention to the fact that your skin tone changes or if you're changing your color, regardless of if it's gray, if you're just changing it in general, modify your makeup makes a big difference. Oh, and real quick, before we dive into the next mistake, could you do me a huge favor? If you find value in this, would you just go ahead and comment below and say, love this? I'm really curious as to whether or not these particular videos actually are giving value to you. And I really want to know. It's important because, like I said before, these videos get a ton of views. So it's hard to say, like, is it just getting views because it's getting views? Or are you actually getting something from this content? So, yes, if you like this style of video, go ahead and comment below. Let me know. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, and since that view definitely does not suck, uh, why don't we just jump into mistake number three right here. Okay, so mistake number three is not modifying the trend. Okay, I am 100% aware that there are a group of people that really want to follow the trends, and you try to follow them very closely. And I'm actually not against that at all. If you feel confident in a trendy style, then that's what you should move towards. But here's kind of my little bit of a caveat. One mistake people make is assuming that that trend straight out of the book is going to function best for them. Those trends don't always function quite as well. Now, it does not mean that you should not try them. It just means that we want to modify them or pay a little bit more attention to certain things to really get them to function their best for us. And what that really relies on is creating the right shape. It means you want to take that trend, modify the volume, put the volume in certain areas that is going to accentuate what we want to accentuate about our face shape so that we get overall the best look for ourselves at whatever age we are. But simply taking a cookie cutter trendy hairstyle and just putting it on ourselves, while it may work for our hair texture, it may not have the volume in the right areas, and putting that cookie cutter haircut on you may not look nearly as good as it could if we just made a few slight modifications, kept it within the trend, and really just kind of paid attention to making it work better for you. So, modify the trend. It'll go a long way into looking more youthful. So, the next mistake is all about your face shape. Okay, let's be honest. That audio is not going to work. It's going to drive you insane. And as much as I love that stream, I figure, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do this particular mistake here so that you don't have to struggle with the obnoxious audio. Fair enough? Okay. And number four is all about face shapes. And it's simply focusing too much on your face shape. Now, one of the major questions that I get asked behind the chair is simply, what is my face shape? <laughs> and the hard part about this is, especially as we age, many times our face shape might shift a bit. We could lose some weight, gain some weight, gravity could take hold. There's a multitude of different reasons. While trying to put yourself into a very specific category, maybe there's attributes of a few different face shapes that you see in yours and you 
can't really figure out which exact box you should fit into. So for me, what I tell people is instead of focusing so much on trying to fit into a particular category, instead focus on bringing attention to or taking attention away from things that you like and or dislike about your face. Maybe you love your eyes. Well, then in that case, we would focus on a hairstyle that does a better job of bringing more focus to your eyes. Maybe we look towards bangs in that situation. The point being is that focusing on simply trying to get your face to fall into one particular category to me is far less important than focusing on using your hairstyle to bring emphasis to things that you love about your face shape or to kind of take emphasis away from things that you may not love quite as much. So yeah, next time you're trying to figure out your face shape, stop and focus more on your actual facial features. There we go. Now, enough of this. Let's get back to the hype. Okay, now the final mistake is a big one. In fact, I, I believe, in my opinion, it's probably the biggest one. But good news, it's also the by far easiest to address. It is simply allowing anyone else to dictate your hairstyle for you or thinking that for any reason at a certain age, you shouldn't be wearing a certain style, which I kind of feel like contradicts everything I just said, but let me explain. So follow me here. Now, first of all, I am 1000% aware that there are two camps here. There are people that live in the camp that feels that, hey, I want to make whoever, my family member, my spouse, a loved one, whatever, somebody, a friend, etc., feel good. And if me wearing my hair makes them feel good or they like that, then I'm all for it. And if you're a person that feels confident doing that, hey, maybe it's not the exact hair length or the exact hair style that you want, but you feel confident in knowing that the person that you are doing that style for likes it, more power to you, then you need to do that. And if that makes you feel good, awesome. I'm not against it. I'm speaking to the folks in the camp that are having their hairstyle dictated by somebody, but they don't ultimately feel as confident as they could. To me, that is a massive mistake. And you gotta understand that most people that are trying to pigeonhole you into a specific look, it may not even be for any sort of malicious purpose. It could simply be that for whatever reason in their mind, that's how they've always known you or that's how they've always seen you. Or from their experience, people of a certain age or of a certain type or whatever, that's how they're supposed to look. What you have to understand is that you need to do whatever makes you the most confident. Because I promise you, if you're not your most confident, then whoever you're doing that style for, they are not getting the maximum benefit that they could get because you are not capable of being your best self. And if you're not being your best self, then you're not bringing everything that you have to the table. So if you truly wanna do those folks a service, bring your best, which is to say, be your best, which is to say, do what makes you feel best. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> no, but you follow my purpose, right? The goal at the end of all of this is to make you feel the best and the most confident because at the end of the day, that's how you're going to feel and look your best. But by the way, uh, before we jump off, if you did find value in this, if you're stuck around this long, do me a massive favor and actually go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my future videos, as well as make sure you hit that little bell because it actually does notify you then when I actually upload a video so that you do get to be able to see it and don't miss it. Because otherwise you, you might miss it and that could be terrible, right? Did that make sense? I hope so. Um, you know what's rough is you can't see it very well, but there's a really cool, pretty massive lake behind me. But those trees are kind of in the way but I'm gonna sit here and enjoy it anyway. So that's what I do. Uh, so yes, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy that. And you can hang out and do whatever you want. Yes, uh, probably not. Oh. I'm not even gonna edit that out because that was absolutely ridiculous. Oh my, I'm out, peace. <laughs>